The biggest problem I see with guitar students who are learning Cage is that they understand the concepts of it, but when it comes to real-time application uh, in terms of improvising and playing, uh, it's hard uh, for them to find their next goal, like change the next chord tones or change the next scale. There's a slowdown like that mentally happens as they search. And when you're you know, playing guitar and you're improvising, you wanna be uh, as frictionless and as smooth as possible in both your playing and also your decisions as to where to go. And if you have to like slow slow down time or kind of stop what you're doing uh, and, and pull yourself away from the moment just to find a different chord shape or a different arpeggio or a different pentatonic or a different scale, uh, that really takes you out of the moment and it's also kind of frustrating. And so uh, I find a lot in uh, students that were missing um, the bigger picture of Caged, the real navigational component that a lot of people miss. And so this lesson is going to help you navigate 10 times better. Now you got you to put in the work, okay? I'm going to show you the work that you need to put in, and this is one kind of big practice session. But we're going to take all of you like hunters out there that are playing, you know, on an A chord and all of a sudden like uh, we change to an F and you're, and you're trying to find an F and you have to slow down and kind of jump or you're trying to map out in real time and, and just not getting it, getting it, we're going to turn you into, you know, seamless, frictionless, smooth guitar players. All right, so how do we do this? Well, uh, this is for people who have been, who have been studying Cage. Now, we know that Caged uh, system or the cage chord system consists of a C shape connecting to an A shape, connecting to a G shape, connecting to an E shape, and connecting to back to no, connecting to a D shape and connecting back to a C shape chord. Those were all C chords in five different shapes, and a lot of people focus on these as puzzle pieces, which is like it's understandable. Um, you know, to say, well, I have a C shape, and I have an A shape, and I have a G shape, and I have an E shape, and I have a D shape. But the biggest miss is that the cage chord system is actually this complete shape. That's the cage chord system. Inside of it are the cage chord, uh, excuse me, the cage chords, but that's the cage chord system. And a lot of people, like if I asked you to think of a puzzle, you know, are you thinking of puzzle pieces or are you thinking of a picture that has all little puzzles, you know, puzzle pieces snapped together? And the idea is a lot of people think of the cage chord system as puzzle pieces. And right there is the big miss. Uh, we want to know, or you want to know, or I want to know, all of us want to know the cage chord system completely locked together uh, with no, no friction. And so if you can't play a cage chord system like this, you know, with minimal friction, uh, then there is your starting point. And so I'm going to show you something that's going to help you navigate better. Now, why Why do you want to learn this? Well, because of course, not only are you going to learn where the chords are, but you got to understand something. All the root notes for these chords, they, they never move. And this C chord brings a C pentatonic, and this C chord brings a C pentatonic, and this C chord brings a C pentatonic, and so on. And this C chord brings a C major scale, and this brings a C major scale, and this brings a C major scale. The chords themselves are the navigational tools to help you, of course, find the chords. They're there to help you find the pentatonics, and they're help you. Uh, they're there to help you find the scales. All right. And if you can't find those chords first, you can't find those scales. Everything is navigated in the cage chord system by bringing the chord shapes to you. All right. Those chords are constellations. They are the easiest, most navigatable pieces of scales and chords together, actually, that you can find with your eyes and ears and play and navigate and bring everything to you. So this whole shape, this whole entire shape needs to be mastered. You have to know its components but you have to master the shape. And in mastering the shape, you'll start to memorize where chords are and of course scales are. So let me show you what I want you to do, all right? We're gonna start with a C shape. We'll do this with a couple shapes, but you're gonna take your C shape chord 
and we're going to start here and you're going to say to yourself okay this is a root note here and this is a root note here and now with your eyes closed you want to try and do this with your eyes closed all right i'll show you okay and i'm going to keep my eyes closed as best i can is you want to put your first finger where your ring finger is play the note there it is now you make your a shape chord all right the most important piece of this puzzle is that you have these two root notes, you put your first finger where your ring finger is, and you play the A-shaped chord. The next thing you want to do is take your index finger and put it where your ring finger is completely, the entire bar. And now you want to put your pinky three frets up on the high E string. This is the thin G shape. All right, so you want to know how to play this without looking. I'll, I'll, I'll open my eyes, but I won't look that way. Look how I moved. Look again in slow motion how I took my fingers, put them where I wanted them to be. Okay? Ooh. How embarrassing, right? And so, you want to know the shape. This whole big shape first. Now, this is a high E string, okay? And you're on the eighth fret of the high E string, and you can play the thick G shape like this if you wish, like that. But the most important piece of the puzzle is that you have the same note on the eighth fret of the E string, so you're gonna put your first finger there. Then you play your E shape, all right? Now, you have your E shape, and the root note is where your first finger is, it's also where your pinky is. Now we're gonna do this slowly, I'm just kinda of showing you like how you wanna practice this. And uh, you wanna take your pinky, and you wanna put your first finger where your pinky is. Now you can use your eyes here, cause like a pinky, like where your pinky is on, on your hand, <laughs> it's hard to visualize sometimes. And you can put your first finger there and you can play the modified D shape that I show you in my cage chord lesson number one on my cage primer. And there are the five shapes of the cage chord system, but as one complete system. Some fun facts here, okay? If you know this, if you if you really can go like this. That was a screw up there. But if you can do that and, and go backwards, you don't need to watch this video. But if you're having a hard time navigating and you know your stuff, you want to keep watching. The idea here is that this root note map that uh, connects these shapes, this root note to this root note. This root note to this root note. This root note to this root note. And this root note here. This root note to this root note here. And then that root note to the root note here in the B string. Now we're gonna go over that completely in a couple seconds, but that is the cage chord system. You don't have to think about right now what notes you're playing, and you really don't have to think about what chord you're playing. You're probably like, what? What? And what I mean by that is whatever chord you start with, if you connect your shapes, C shape to A shape, to G shape, to E shape, to D shape, and you can go back, of course, back to C shape. If you connect them properly, those are all C chords, all right, all of them. And so you don't have to go, is this a C chord? What chord is this? It's a C chord. Now we're gonna change chords in a couple minutes, but I wanna show you the practice routine you wanna do. And you wanna do it right now as you're sitting with me, all right? You want to look at that root note map that I showed you, and you wanna start thinking of those frets first, okay? So this is an exercise you wanna do. These are several practice exercises you wanna do that are gonna help fortify your navigation, all right? So you're gonna take your C chord, you can see root notes first fret and third fret. Now I'm going to go my A shape. You're going to do the same connection physically. You're going to put your first finger <laughs> where your ring finger is, all right? And you're going to play your A shape, but you're going to say third fret and fifth fret. I should be using my pick. So one and three, three and five. Put your first finger where your ring finger is. There's that exercise. Okay, fifth fret of the G string and eighth fret of the high E string. These are all C's. C here. All right, eighth fret of the E string and tenth fret of the D string, and then tenth fret of the D string and thirteenth fret of the B string. Now, you want to say those fret numbers when you're doing that root note math like that. Let's do the same exact thing. Let's start on a different chord so that you can, I can show you that that root note map shape never changes, right? It, the, the starting point changes, but the actual shape never changes. So if I started on a G, 
Okay. My root note is on the E string. And now all we've done is picked up the root note on the E string. And so you're gonna put your first finger here and now you're gonna play your E shape and there's your second root note on the D string fifth fret. You're gonna put your first finger where your pinky is and then you're gonna play your D shape. And there it is on the eighth fret of the B string. Now we have to connect your D shape to your C shape, which I do talk about in my Cage Primer playlist, right? That is gonna be where you go one fret behind that root note with your first finger and play your C shape. Now these root notes are, are the same, are in the same place, or on the same strings that we started on C. They're on the B string and the A string. Then we're gonna connect that, put your first finger where your pinky is, and you're gonna play your A shape. All right, so we have all of your Gs. Now you want to concentrate on those root notes, right? You want to go, okay, three to five, five to eight, all right? Eight to 10, 10 to 12. And if you want to go back and octave higher, you go 12 to 15. Sorry about that. You really want to concentrate on those root notes. And you can see all we did was just, we started on a different place on that map, all right? Let's do it with one more chord and just to show you, and then we're gonna talk more about this practice, all right? Practicing just like this is gonna make you navigate better, and I'll show you how in a couple minutes. All right, so let's do an A chord. All right, well, our root note's on our open A. Other root note is on the G string second fret. We're following that root note map. All right, after the A shape comes our G shape. So we have our, our G string root note and our high E. All right. Now, or your low E. All right, there's that root note, put your first finger there, and play your E shape, it's your index finger and your pinky. You're gonna play your D shape, put your first finger where your pinky was, play your modified D shape. Here is our D to C connection, you go one fret behind your root note with your first finger, play your C shape. There's that B string and A string root note. Put your first finger where your, um, the next finger was, and we play the A shape. Now, you can see that we're taking all those puzzle pieces and we're connecting them, of course, in the same shape over and over and over again, just picking them up in different places. Uh, before we move on, let's just do those individual root notes. Zero, uh, zero or open A, second fret G, to fifth fret E, seventh fret D, seventh fret D, 10th fret B, 10th fret B, 12th fret A, and 12th fret A and 14th fret on the, uh, the G string. All right, now, so the root note map or the cage chord system is that whole piece right there. What you wanna do, after you, after you can comfortably start realizing that you wanna be able to connect these shapes, you know, as, as fast as you possibly can, without worry about the, no, the chord name or the notes that you're playing at first, all right? You just wanna get that shape down. The second exercise you wanna do is connect all your chord shapes forward, like I, like I said, with that physical connection in mind, meaning, okay, you know, ring finger, index, okay? Ring finger, index, pinky, okay? Index, oh, really? Index, pinky, uh, pinky, there it is. You know, and you really wanna, you really wanna focus on the physical aspect of everything. After that, when you get to your last shape, now what you want to do is you want to go backwards, but you don't want to go backwards like with those physical connections. You want to go backwards with your brain and naming the chord and its shape. So here we have a D shaped C chord. Well, what came before that? What became uh, before that was the E shaped C chord here on the eighth fret. What came before that? Let's think. That was the G shaped C chord on the fifth fret. What came before that? That was the A-shaped um, C chord on the third fret. And what came before that? That was the open C chord. So on the way up, you connect with the physical, like this, like. On the way back, okay, okay, now we start naming what we're doing. D-shaped C chord. Uh, connected to the E shaped C chord, connected to the G shaped C chord, 
connected to the A-shaped C chord, connected to the C-shaped C chord. This is going to do wonders for you. Uh, your mind, your, your mind and your mind's eye and your eyes are going to see the connections on the way up, and then you're going to start to think about what they actually are. The more you do this, the more you're going to start to say, oh yeah, that G-shaped chord on the fifth fret is a C chord, or that E-shaped um, chord on the, uh, on, uh, sorry, on the eighth fret is a C chord. Or the 10th fret D-shaped is a C chord. The more you do this, the more you're going to start to physically know that cage chord system, giant shape you need to know, and now it's individual pieces. Let's do it with a different chord. Let's do it with, uh, we'll do it with G. We did G earlier, so we have G. And we're going to do the physical, physical connection on the way up. First finger here to the E-shape. First finger goes to where my pinky is. Okay, boom, I play my D-shape. All right. I have my root note here, but we're connecting the D shape to the C shape, so it's one fret behind that root note with my index finger. So I go to the seventh fret, play my C shape. I have the B string, I have the A string, I put my first finger where my pinky is, and I'm going to play the A shape. And if I want to go even higher, I'm going to put my index finger where my ring finger is and play my G shape. Now I'm going to go backwards. Okay, what do I have here? I have a G shaped G chord. What came before it? Well, it was on the 10th fret, it was the A-shaped G chord. What came before that? Well, that was on that 7th fret C-shaped G chord. What came before that? That was hmm, the 5th fret D-shaped chord. Sorry, 5th fret D-shaped G chord. And what came before that? Well, that was the E-shaped chord on the 3rd fret, and then an open G. And that's how you want to do it. Okay, you want to do it forward with the physical connections and backwards with the mental shapes that happened before it. All right, why do you want to practice this? Well, the idea is, like I said at the beginning of this video, all of your scales, all right, some video titles will be popping up on the screen, all of your pentatonics and all of your scales come with these chords. When I'm soloing, or I can guarantee you, anyone who uses the cage chord system which there are a lot of, and they might not, how do I say this? They might not be like physically thinking like caged, 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 but they, they know that the chord shape of whatever they want will bring you the scale of what you want. So if I want um, a G major pentatonic and I'm here, I know that there's a, uh, like a C-shaped G, G major pentatonic and I'm bringing... I'm, I'm getting that information from, from finding the chord. I'm not thinking about where is my G, my G major pentatonic. I'm thinking where's my G major chord because I know how to translate that chord into a pentatonic. If I need a G major scale, I'm thinking about where is my G major scale, excuse me, my G major chord so I can find my G major scale that goes with it. The chords are the serving tray, are the conveyor belt, they are the escalator, they are the door dash of, of the musical world, the guitar neck, they are, they bring everything to you. So the more you can study your chords, both major and minor. Now, I showed you how to do this with major, and uh, Cage, you know, my Cage Primer playlist, um, lessons one and two go over major and minor chords. Lessons seven and eight in my Cage Primer playlist go over the pentatonic relationship to each chord. And link below will also be the major scales that go to each chord. Um, but a lot of people, the reason that I'm talking about this is everything I just mentioned are pieces of that puzzle. This is the, is the complete puzzle piece. This entire shape. Knowing the individual shapes is okay. It's kind of like, like Gestalt psychology. The sum is greater than the total of its parts, right? So, like, so this, this here is the big picture. That whole shape is the big picture. So you really want to know it. You want to know it well. You want to keep on doing it. And you'll see that the more you practice this bigger picture of cage on the guitar neck, the better your guitar playing will become. All right. If you want to learn more about, you know, the pentatonics that go with these shapes, check out my cage primer playlist. If you want to practice more with me, I'll be doing more exercises and showing you how to develop these maps with minor as well and major uh, in underneath your fingertips and make them so easy that you don't have to guess or look so you can play uh, songs that have multiple chord changes and bring color to it in your solos and your arpeggios. You can check out Patreon. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, talk to you soon. And uh, my allergies are, are kicking my butt. My mouth's really dry, so I'm, I'm going to go get a drink. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.